Coming up tonight at 10, the heat is on. It's going to be a hot weekend ahead. We got the latest numbers coming up. Plus, Hattiesburg's water meters are getting an upgrade. We're going to have details on the project coming up. And U.S. Secretary, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg spent some time in Mississippi this week getting a first-hand look at our state's needs. Your News at 10 starts now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in. Thanks for being here. I'm Michael Clark. It's the first official weekend of summer and right on cue. It's going to be hot. Patrick, we're not quite going to be in triple digits, right? Yeah, I don't think we're going to be in triple digits okay. this weekend. We'll see heat indices eventually making it up. You know, it'll feel like 100 to 103 out there, but the actual air temperature should stay in the upper 90s. Uh, normally we show the moon here at night because that's what we're kind of talking about, but the heat is on. So let's flip it over to a more uh, kind of summertime graphics there. Now, right now we're at 77. It doesn't feel too bad out there, but it is a little humid. As we take a live look, that right there is Walt Massey Ford in Columbia. Currently, temperatures across the area are sitting into the upper 70s at the moment. 77 in Purvis, 78 in Petal, it's 79 in Clare, up 80 in Richardson, and it is 77 out towards Collins this evening. Now, for the rest of tonight, we're going to be fine. In the morning when you wake up, low 70s. But look at the afternoon high. A quick warm up to 90 by 11 a.m., 93 at 1 p.m. 97 by the afternoon. It's going to be a hot day and unfortunately this is not going to be the peak of it. We're going to continue to get a little hotter as we go into Sunday and especially by Monday. The heat will build and so will the humidity and that'll make it feel even worse. I'll talk about it all coming up in full details in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. Residential water meters will soon be replaced in the city of Hattiesburg after the council approved a bid for the nearly $7.7 .7 million project. Delaney Dukes is live in the studio to tell us more tonight. Delaney. Hey, Michael, Hattiesburg's current water meter system was installed over a decade ago. However, city leaders say the batteries and thousands of those residential meters started failing, but residents can look forward to new technology in the future. When water meters were installed in 2009, it allowed workers to drive around the city with a laptop to check the meters, and the data would automatically transfer to them. But over the past few years, the city has seen the system wear down. It has become unreliable for us to be able to just read them automatically from a vehicle. They have to be manually read. Someone has to get out of their vehicle, walk up to the meter, and, and, and pull the information off the meter. However, this started causing delays and longer billing periods for residents. Well, we bill in three routes, so we're having to manually walk and read those those meters and those routes It's taken you know anywhere from a week to 10 days longer than normal. The new technology will allow residents to see their meter readings live from an app. So if you spring a leak or are using more water than normal, you'll be able to see it right from your phone. They'll know day to day, minute by minute. If they really wanted to, they can see how exactly how their water usage is going. So we're we're modernizing. We're going to get it faster in the office and it's going to be updated with our financial system too so that billings process is more reliable as well. And this is just another one of those things that we're doing to just come come more into the, the current century that we're in and getting on, you know, cellular data, cellular network. It's, it's just modernizing our system. City leaders estimate this entire project should take about nine to 12 months to complete. All right, Delaney, thanks. The Mississippi Department of Transportation is using new technology to improve traffic safety as projects continue along I-59. The I-59 paving project spans 14 miles from the Lamar County line to just south of Moselle. MDOT is using the Smart Work Zones system to share real-time traffic updates with drivers. That includes information about delays and changes in travel times. MDOT expects that system to help with congestion and prevent accidents around heavily traveled areas. Smart work zone technology has been estimated to reduce accidents by about 45%. And I've actually seen some statistics that are even higher than that. And of course, any time that we can reduce accidents and especially reduce fatalities, saving lives, that's something that we'll definitely want to do. The I-59 paving project is expected to wrap up by late this year or early next year. A two-day tour of projects is giving the U.S. Transportation Secretary a look into the needs of Mississippi. We were there for part of the trip for Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Courtney Ann Jackson has an inside look at why it goes beyond roads. 
Well, it's an honor to be here. This is the first visit to Mississippi for Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and included this tour of Medgar Evers Home Museum. Living room, dining room. If you're scratching your head about seeing the Transportation Secretary touring a home and not a highway, for example, he puts it into perspective. Part of why we are doing this work is that we know that even the most superficial examination of the legacy of the civil rights movement reminds us of the relationship between transportation and equality. And the fact that equitable transportation has always been one of the core commitments and for that reason has also always been one of the most important battlegrounds of the struggle for racial and economic justice and civil rights in this country. This groundbreaking is for the upcoming $20 million project to reconstruct a mile and a half stretch of Medgar Evers Boulevard. Congressman Benny Thompson explains that it's funded through the National Infrastructure Package. It's an opportunity to redo it, resurface it, uh, fix all of the problems associated with it so that people will feel comfortable just coming right through uh, this area, whereas right now uh, they don't. So that's part of reconnect. Buttigieg also toured parts of the Delta, including the Port of Rosedale. Well, the secretary is kind of like a Santa Claus to me. When he's coming in and bringing out all these dollars, uh, I can't say how much I appreciate his willingness to come to Mississippi and spend time. We ask what stood out in his first trip to the state. What I see is a lot of need, and that's exactly why we're making these investments and going out of our way to make sure they reach smaller communities, rural in communities, communities of color, places that were left out in the past. Courtney Ann Jackson, WDAM, on your side. Now the secretary says there's a common thread for the hundreds of projects in Mississippi getting money from this federal package. They all come from the communities that best know the needs and they're coming in with the funding to make sure they become reality. It's now harvest time for a Covington County organization that grows vegetables and donates them to food banks and soup kitchens across South Mississippi. Folks are stepping up to pick thousands of ears of corn for the Seeds of Hope organization. You see everyone here this morning. Those volunteers helped load many of those boxes of corn for groups like Christian Services and the Osceola McCarty Youth Development Center in Hattiesburg. Other organizations like the Glory House in Laurel and the Edwards Street Fellowship Center are also getting donations of produce this year. It's went to about five churches in Jackson. Right now we're about to load and head to Christian Services, Edward Street. Yesterday it went to the Glory House in Laurel, Mississippi. It's going to the Pedal Children's Task Force today also. You learn more about volunteering for Seeds of Hope this harvest season by checking out the story on our website. Well, today Jones Logistics celebrated its 25th anniversary by giving back to the community. Check this out. This morning, employees of Jones Logistics volunteered at Town Square Park in Hattiesburg. They installed Born Learning Trail signs and made repairs to the gazebo in the park. This was all a part of United Way Day of Action. A ribbon cutting was then held at the park later this afternoon to commemorate the work that was done. The Born Learning Trails are an education initiative of United Way, and it's a series of interactive educational signs that we put around walking trails that give uh, caregivers and families educational prompts to, for their children as they stroll. Well, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary, and it is part of our core culture to give back to our communities that we, that we serve. And our employees are very vested in that. And we had over 35 employees today giving back to their communities. There's a celebration after the ribbon cutting this afternoon, which included a cookout, ice cream, yard games, and participation in the main attraction, the Born Learning Trail. Pretty cool. So ahead at 10 o'clock, we're going to take a look at the importance of reporting damage after a storm. Stick with us.